to go. Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome to the September 28th meeting of the Community Preservation Committee. Uh, happy fall to everybody out there. As always, we begin with uh, general public comment, but I'm not seeing any of the general public out there. Is that correct, Sarah? I think everyone is here to speak to a agenda item. To an agenda item, that is correct. That's true with everybody. No one here to speak to, the, to a regular thing. Okay, we will move right along then. Uh, we have uh, to approve the minutes of March 16th of this year that Sarah sent us. Uh, is there a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Thank you, Martha. A second? Somebody second, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, Thank you, Julia. Uh, any discussion on the minutes of the March 16th meeting? Sarah, do you need to, I, I always forget, do we do a roll call on this? We do, roll call votes required. So, um, Julia? Dana wasn't there. Martha? Yes. Jana? Abstain. Julia? I said Julia. Uh, Chris? Aye. Jen? I was also going to abstain, but does that mess up our vote? Uh, that would not, yeah, we wouldn't have a quorum. Okay. okay. Can I? We could, we could postpone until the next meeting if necessary. I wasn't there either. Um, I did review them, but I don't have. Should we delay this until the next meeting? We can kick it to the next meeting. That's fine. Okay. Sorry. Let's do that then. No problem. Great. All right. Well, thank you for providing that, Sarah. And uh, maybe we'll have a few um, minutes to approve for the for the next meeting. Uh, Chair's report. Uh, let's begin with an introduction to Carolyn Nish, who is our new director of planning and sustainability. Welcome, Carolyn. Thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, we are happy to have you. We hear such wonderful things about you. And we've had a number of your proposals already coming into us. And we're sure we will see you a lot in the next few months, years, <laughs> well, whatever. And forever and ever. <laughs> yes, exactly. So thank you. Thank you, Carolyn. And we'll uh, get back to you in just a bit when we talk about the Canal Greenway retaining, <laughs> which you will be speaking to. Uh, the second thing is I wanted to uh, note that Bev Bates will be joining us as our new Linda Morley. She is uh, a Morial, Mayorial, is that how you say it, appointment as Linda was. Uh, she has a great background in affordable housing. So we are sad that Linda has left us oh, after a long time with us. Uh, but uh, it seems like um, Beth, Bev is bringing in a good expertise in a, in a field that Linda was so well versed in um, and also has interest in all the other stuff that we do. So Bev cannot make it here this evening, but we'll be seeing her next meeting, hopefully. So welcome, welcome, Bev. Uh, the other one, so Dan Krasner, as we noted last meeting, has uh, left us as an elected representative, he along with Chris. Uh, is one of our two elected representatives. Dan has moved to New York or Brooklyn or someplace, New York City. Uh, the city council is now, uh, will be interviewing candidates to fill Dan's spot until the November election when this interim person decides to run or not to run. So I know at least one person has put their, tossed their hat into the ring to be on our committee. Uh, the city council will be interviewing people and will make that recommendation uh, or elect, or not election, but I guess recommendation sometime in October. So right now we're down a couple folks. Bev will be joining us next meeting and perhaps next meeting or maybe until the end of October that we have a new, a new committee member. 
So we will miss Dan and we will miss Linda. And we're hoping for two good people to replace the two of them. The other couple, other few things I wanted to mention was one, uh, as I'm sure all of you know, the St. John Canius Church issue is looming large. Um, I, in my term as, uh, as a member of the Community Preservation Committee, there's never been an issue that has been more, uh, I, wanna, I don't know if the, contentious is the right word, but uh, lots of public input, lots of interest in it, lots of editorials and letters to the editor and public comment. Uh, I attended, after our vote in July, I believe it was, our unanimous vote to move the project forward for $500,000. The uh, city council had a meeting in, I can't remember whether it was August or September now, and uh, heard from a lot of people. So there was a lot of public comment on that meeting, both for and against funding of the project. City council did not vote at that time. They simply heard comment and then uh, asked a lot of questions to Sarah and to, let's see, Carolyn, were you at that city council meeting? I cannot, I can't remember that first one. Uh, not the first one, I was at the, the subcommittee. That, so that was, that was uh, Sarah handling that for us. And I, and I spoke up as well, rec representing the committee. The city council kicked it back to the um, back to the finance committee and the community resources committee, and they met a couple weeks ago. Again, a lot of public comment on that. People attending that Zoom meeting, um, both committees expressed reservations with the proposal and expressed concern about, as we heard a uh, money going to a private entity that uh, was a for-profit, that was market rate housing, that would not allow entrance into the building. So again, there was a lot of pro and there was a lot of con, um, but the both finance committee and uh, community resources committee expressed reservations, wanted to hear or think about it a little more and passed it back on to city council. So the next city council meeting is October the 6th, which is coming right up as in next, what is it, next Thursday, I believe it is. Uh, and city council will be theoretically voting on it at that time. Um, so again, it's been a, been a lot of interest in the community about this and a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of comments. Any questions or comments from us about that, committee members about that, the St. John Cantius proposal. Chris? Um, yeah, thanks for the update, Brian. So uh, I, I recognize this is a little unprecedented, but um, were you sought out or was this something that, uh, I mean, does the, does the, uh, does the uh, city council ask us for our opinions on that? Or is this something that you, uh, you, you, know, you thought was a good idea? Well, the, we are represented at city council and also at the finance committee and um, community resources committee by staff person, so staff people. So Sarah was at city council. She was on vacation. I guess it was last week when uh, when the two subcommittees met or the two committees met and Carolyn uh, did the heavy lifting on for, for those committees. Once Carolyn left the meeting, because she it was a long meeting just on this topic. Carolyn had to leave at I think six, started at five, and then I was able to field some of the questions for the for the following hour. I was not asked by city council or requested by city council, but I was um, told by Sarah that it would be a good idea for me to show up. So I did I did do that. But no, to answer your question, they did not specifically ask for our input as a committee, but did want Sarah and or Carolyn representing us and speaking to the proposal. And the, the subcommittees are a little bit more informal. Um, the members will have discourse with members of the public and others in attendance, but city council generally doesn't recognize anyone but staff and sometimes committee members, depending on the nature of the discussion. 
during the full council meeting, only in the initial public comment at the beginning. And even with the committee meetings, there had to be a vote to recognize me as speaking, not just at the beginning. So it's a fairly formal process to be to be recognized. Chris, is, does that answer your question? It's the information I was looking for. It's it it's not a satisfactory response. I don't really understand that, but I guess if that's the way the, the council runs, then that's the way the council runs. You know, I I did my best, and I know Carolyn did as well, to summarize the discussion of the not only the CPC but um, what had transpired at other public meetings. Um, you know, Central Business Architecture Historical Commission um, and and others regarding the matter and. Um, why the CPC felt that it was important to make this recommendation. Yeah, no, and I'm I mean, don't get me wrong. I think I think you're better qualified than than certainly than I am. Um and probably most of us are to 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 handle the minutia of that. I just, I just I, I yeah. I I yeah. I just have a I have a uh, procedural issue, but n not a substantive one. That and this is a little bit outside of the box for how CPC recommendations usually go. Um, you know, usually I'll give an overview of the project, summarize the the funding round and what the committee has decided, and it's it's a pretty quick discussion for the most part. Um, right. right. The, yeah. This is a little bit unusual. This is the first time that a CPC recommendation has ever been referred to the Community Resources Committee. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. And and I think it's it's been my. Uh, it's been my experience never to feel the need to go to city council meetings that um, uh, that Sarah represents us more than adequately um, and uh, and that the the topics themselves have not have not been contentious and so I I felt it was it was important for a committee member to be present at both the city council as well as the committee meetings and perhaps I've dropped the ball and should have been there in the past for other meetings as well um, i i i think you represent us frequently and 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 extremely well um i guess i should probably just get myself on the schedule for for the notifications on that so i mean if yeah. any committee members did want to speak during public comment at the next city council meeting you could you're definitely welcome to do that um if you feel like there's anything you'd additional that you'd want to contribute to summarize the discussion in particular. Um, I mean, with this particular recommendation, city council is really, and their subcommittees are really hashing out all of the discussions that the CPC has already had, essentially. You know, they're, they're hearing from constituents both about why the church is important and why it needs to be saved, as well as people opposed to um, use of public funding in particular. So they're, you know, they're weighing the same options that the CPC did, which is something that hasn't really happened with projects in the past. And again, and Sarah and Carolyn, correct me if I'm wrong, the city council will be theoretically voting on this on the October 6th. That's a week from tomorrow meeting. Um, and that's at seven o'clock, I believe, on Zoom. So we're all welcome to participate and uh, and publicly comment at the beginning of uh, beginning of the meeting. And I don't know if it'll be the first agenda item or not, but I imagine there'll be a lot of people speaking once again. Any other comments about the St. John Cantius issue? I think, uh, Jeff, you had your hand up, right? Yeah, I did ever so briefly. Thanks, Brian. Um, first, I'm sorry I'm late. Um, I had a long contract bargaining session today and um, actually in person. So I got stuck on a road coming back, but um, so as I understood it, these two subcommittees were um, basically wanted to further study the issue and didn't really take a position. And yet I also heard that um, they don't necessarily have a lot of weight with the full city council. Is, is the, that an the, accurate way to put it? The committee members are members of the city council. Right, in fact, I know that. Yeah, um, and and I and I don't know what more information they are gathering. Perhaps Carolyn and Sarah, you can help us out with that. 
but that was the impression, Jeff, that I got okay. is that they were not comfortable at that point making a recommendation. They sort of said we are we have a neutral recommendation. They didn't vote against it, but they um, they were split in the finance committee. Two, I think, two voting for, two voting against, which means it didn't pass. So another motion was made to move it back to city council with a neutral recommendation, and that passed unanimously for both okay. of the both of the committees. Um, just the other question I had was, um, we have had the history of this group. We have had a recommendation rejected by city council in the past that I wasn't around for. And what were the differences between how that one went down and how this one is so far being dealt with? So no, uh, city council that. has never actually um, not agreed with the CPC recommendation. In oh, the, I thought we had one. Well, it's in the past, these were presented to the mayor. Um, and the okay. two mayors ago, a, a mayor declined to put something forward to city council. Um, okay. I, I don't even know what the project was. I would have to look Thank it you. Up. Um, but anything that's gone to full city council has been approved. Okay. Uh, Martha? Yeah, I just want to thank you, Brian. Um, I This is a, a, a large investment of your time to be doing this as a volunteer. And um, I just want to express my appreciation. I know how difficult uh, the subject is. And I think that we're, we as a committee are very fortunate to have you as such a, um, well-spoken representative, uh, someone who can be very even-handed about this. And um, I just want to tell you how much I, I appreciate that. You're here. Thank you, Martha. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. We'll see how city council votes. It'll be, it'll be really interesting, but thank you. Uh, Julia? Oh, that was a thumbs up. <laughs> no. Not a not a hand raised. Any other uh, comments or questions about St. John Caves? Okay. So a couple of other things in my chair's report. One, I had the pleasure of going to the Hampshire Heights Playground dedication. Folks remember that, and maybe it was what two years ago, Sarah, something like that. Uh, they were supposed to have it months ago, and then I think it was the weather that did not cooperate. Um, so I was able to go and it's just a gorgeous playground. I mean, it's really cool and it's got all sorts of sort of creative things that I think will last forever. And there were quite a few people there and a lot of kids and I had a snow cone for the first time and I don't know how long, so like a blue snow cone and that was pretty cool. And um, so people seemed very happy and the mayor was there and. Uh, I think three of our city councilors and uh, our state representative. So it was very nice to see our project being so appreciated by the community. That was great. The other thing I did, and I would certainly encourage, well, I would encourage everyone to go and take a look at the playground. Um, but I went into Village Hill uh, a week or so ago, just to look at the North Commons mixed housing project. And if you haven't been there, you should just go and take a look at it. I mean, it's a gorgeous building in a great location. And if you remember this a number of years ago, we gave or allocated $250,000 to a $20 million project, which is pretty impressive. 53 total units, 39 are income restricted. Um, but it's just a beautiful place and it's a great location and uh, certainly worth our time if you have a moment to, to drive by there. And as you're driving by, Stop by the State Hospital Fountain. I don't know if people have seen that, but it is amazing. And Sarah spent a lot of time on this. I mean, it's just beautiful. It's like something you'd find in a, you know, in a, in Rome or something. I don't know. Uh, but it's just really cool, and it's and it's in the exact spot of where the fountain was. Uh, and there's one, two, three really great signs with tons of information there in this little park um, right there. And I can't remember what, what row that's on, Sarah, do you know, do you remember? Uh, 
That's all right. But you'll you'll find them. I mean, there aren't that many roads you drive around. So anyway, that's a nice little field trip. North Commons complex in the in the state hospital uh, fountain. So that's it for my lengthy chairs report. I apologize about that. Uh, moving right along to our financial overview. Uh, Sarah, can you take us through what we're looking at for this round or this fiscal year? Sure. So I sent out an overview to everybody um, just with a quick rundown of what's been applied for in this first round in the fiscal year, as well as what's available. Um, so I have the O'Connell Holly recommendation is pending. Um, Assuming that that is approved by city council, we'll have uh, 1.989 million available for the entire fiscal year, um, 252,000 um, each is reserved in the affordable housing reserve and the open space reserve. Uh, again, assuming that O'Connell Holly is approved by city council, that will leave zero in the historic reserve with the remainder in the budgeted reserve. Um, and one point, just over 1.6 million has been applied for in project funds this round. So if there's any questions, I'm happy to go over anything else in detail if needed. Thank you, Sarah, for providing that for us. So if we were to fully fund all of the projects this round and the city council was to approve 500,000 for uh, St. John Cantius, we would have, According to my calculations, $369,831 left for round two in the spring. Uh, again, that's if we were to fully fund all, is it 14? 14 of these projects, two of which we'll be dealing with, uh, with tonight. Um, if we do, if city council does not agree to fund the $500,000 for St. John, then we'd be left with two point. Four eight nine million, which is just a huge amount for us. I've never seen that amount, which would leave us, uh, if we were to fully fund everyone, uh, $869,000 for the following round. Uh, Jana, is there a hand there? There was, but I think I answered my own question. Ah. I was just wanting to make sure. So there's one point just over 1.6 million in new requests, not counting John Cantius, correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Other questions for Sarah? So again, this is a pretty astounding amount of money that we have available, uh, which, is, which is pretty exciting and lots of good projects to be looking at. Uh, if there are no uh, further questions on to Sarah on the finances, then we will move to discuss two of the projects that are before us this evening. Um, so our main agenda item tonight is to look at these two projects. The first is Historic Northampton with the Parsons House, um, second floor um, shelving that has come in. Uh, with a request for $3,000. And then the second is the Canal Greenway uh, retaining wall project that uh, Carolyn will be speaking to. And that's coming in at, um, I'm spacing on that one. How much is that? Uh, Sarah, how much is that one for? Right. Uh, the Canal Greenway retaining wall, 120,000, is that right? 120, correct. 120,000. We're dealing with the Parsons House as an ex, as a uh, small grant. Remember our small grants proposal is coming in under $3,000. And we're dealing with the Canal Greenway retaining wall as a expedited uh, request um, because uh, the, the feds have given a 160 or promised $160,000 that would go toward the project. There's a deadline for that, um, which would be June 30th, the end of the fiscal year for next year, June 30th of 2023. Uh, it's a, it requires a matching grant uh, or a grant close to that. So if we 
If we do not provide that in a time sensitive way, then we lose that federal money. Carolyn and Sarah, correct me if I'm wrong, which is why they're asking for an expedited review. Uh, they being the city asking for an expedited review. Um, why don't we start with the historic Northampton uh, $3,000 request. Um, Elizabeth, do you wanna speak to that and give us a little, we, we've hopefully all had a chance to read your proposal and take a look at the shelving. Um, but if you could guide us through just a little bit, that would be helpful. <clears throat> Brian, um, thank you. If you'd like, I can give you a one minute overview of what's going on with the barn, the Shepherd Barn, since you had funded that. That would be great. We would love okay. that. Okay. So um, probably since we last talked to you about it, um, we received a grant from the Mass Cultural Council too, to $106,000. So that's going to offset what um, are going to help us, you know, get to the final total, which we're nearly there. Um, the work has started on it, and it. I invite you to come back by any day. It's really exciting. So Alicia Spence, who's the timber framer, has been creating new gun stock posts and doing something called leveling the roof line. So she's gone around and leveled it and jacked up all the various posts so that they so that the so that the roof line is level so it can be moved off the foundation off its present foundation and another one created and um we made a video so there's a four minute video of alicia explaining what she's doing and watching her do it and that is both on our facebook page and on our youtube page which is just youtube historic northampton and you'll see it so it's it's pretty exciting to see that happen. Another thing that's coming up about it is that in terms of moving the barn off its foundation so that a new concrete foundation can be poured, they decided not to just jack up the building, but instead to slide it off and to, to lay these um, steel I-beams and then slide it on those. And we'll let you know when that's gonna happen because we all think it's it's kind of exciting and we really, really wanna see it happen. Apparently it moves four inches a minute or something like something really slowly. But so they're gonna move it off, finish the digging and then pour the foundation. So, and then they'll slide it back on and then they'll build the two sheds at the back and then reconstruct the L at the front. So this is all that's uh, going on. And I invite you to just drop by anytime and um, take a look. Uh, we'll be doing some archeology span there. The, the real archeology span study has already been done, but we have a lot of stuff that can be sifted through. So I'm gonna pick up the big sifters from UMass tomorrow and we will have public times when people can come and do that and find some more stuff there. So um, that's the that's the big part of how that's going. And one other project just got finished up, which was the balustrade on the roof line of Damon House. We had to wait an extra year because last summer was so rainy. And so this summer it was dry. And so they were able to not only paint it, but they put a metal cap on the top of the balustrade. So it's right along the um, you know, the fence looks like a fence, you know, there and then painted that. So no one will see it. And in fact, the balustrade's totally reconstructed anyway, but it'll, it'll preserve it for longer, you know, because it's out in the elements. So we're happy to get that done. And your, um, the CPA funds were matched by a grant from the 1772 Foundation. Um, so onto this, uh, this proposal. So this is uh, for $3,000. Um, on the second floor of the Parsons house, there are six rooms and um, they're all devoted to collections and they're small rooms. And we're asking for steel shelving for two of the rooms. One has archival materials in it and the other has um, uh, mostly houseware objects and that sort of thing. And um, the shelving is just something we need. We have terrible shelving up there. We bought some temporary stuff, you know, from Home Depot and it just hasn't lasted and it need to be replaced. So we're asking for that as well as the funds for the rehousing supplies. And for us, that's like ether foam and archival cartons and, you know, buffered tissue and all that kind of thing. So a piece of that, or that is a piece 
I mean, for certainly the good storage is important for preservation, but also it's going to enable us to have the space to start a real inventory of the collection. We have about, we think, 40,000 objects, and about 20,000 of them are in our database, which you can search online. But everything needs to be inventoried in, in the database. So anyway, that's a project we'll be going through. It'll going to take several years, and I'm sure you'll hear more about it. But that's sort of a, a piece of that. So that's the project in a nutshell. And the kinds of materials are everything from the collections from the Clapp Pollard House, which is at 70 Old South Street. And you might know about it because there's a historic preservation restriction on it. Um, and other kinds of um, shop signs and materials and housewares and all that sort of thing, large collections. So any questions? Thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, questions? Nothing for this, the historic Northampton project. Okay. Uh, can someone make a motion to uh, regarding the project? I move that we support this application in full. And I do have a uh, just a comment about it, Brian, but I can make that after the second. Okay, thank you. Is there a second? I'll second. Oh, looks like Julia and Jen got their hands up for that. Thank you. Uh, further discussion on this, Martha. I just wanted to um, report uh, Betty appeared before the historical commission on Monday night to uh, get our um, way in on it, and a couple of comments that I wanted to share with the CPC. Um, I think that in general great support and this is an organization that is committed to doing things the right way and this is just one more effort in that direction um and also i think that we really feel and continue to feel that the historic northampton work is has such a clear public benefit even though this is an archive that not everybody gets to go into on a freewheeling basis um it's important to the mission of the organization which is so publicly oriented and so valuable in the city so that's the report. Thank you, Martha. Thank you. Any other discussion? So the motion on the table is for $3,000 to historic Northampton for the Parson House shelving, second floor connection. Uh, collection, I think it should be collection. I, what I did did I say? instead of the L, when I published the agenda, it's a collection. Uh, I was wondering what a connection was, but... There you go, thank you. Um, uh, let's see, Sarah, can you take us through a vote, please? All right, uh, so roll call vote for the $3,000 recommendation. Jeff? Yes. Julia? Yes. Martha? Yes. Jana? Yes. Chris? Yes. Jen? Yes. And Brian? Yes. Unanimous. So Betty, thank you again for all the good thank work you. that you and Historic Northampton does. This will go to city council. Uh, again, we are the recommending body and they are the appropriating body. Uh, and then it takes a little while to get through that, but Sarah, when will they vote on this city council? Uh, so I will get this on the agenda for next week's um, October 6th meeting. Great. Great. So thank you, Betty, and thank good luck you. with uh, moving the uh, moving the barn. That sounds re like really exciting. And really? Do, do keep us in the loop about when the when the whole thing moves. I will. Um, it's going to be pretty exciting. Thank you very much. Bye bye. You are very welcome. Bye. Thank you. Okay. Next on the agenda is the Canal Greenway retaining wall, and here to speak about that is. Uh, Carolyn, so welcome, Carolyn. The first of many times you will be speaking at this meeting, so get used to us and our process. <laughs> so again, welcome, and uh, again, we've had a, hopefully all of us have had a chance to look at the proposal, but if you can go through it with us, that would be helpful. Sure. 
Well, thanks for having me. Thanks for that introduction. Um, I can tell this is going to be a great committee to come and visit. <laughs> um, so the request for this expedited review is really about um, ensuring that we can use grant funds for a project that as described, and I'll just summarize the narrative basically is this um, retaining wall that was built um, along the 1800s canal is um, probably from the 1850s um, and has um, been holding up the um, side slopes, the walls um, along the greenway. And I'll, I can share my screen and show you, I think it might be in, the, in your agenda, but I'll just put it up on the screen. But it's sort of, you can see the Smith parking garage right there. Um, so it's um, below that along the rail trail that goes, or the greenway, sorry, that goes um, um, between Veterans Field and downtown. And um, it's falling apart after all these years, and we've had to put um, some um, reinforcement. It's been sort of patched, but now there's reinforcement and protection to try to protect um, people using the trail from any um, errant um, stone or concrete pieces that might come off of it. So uh, the purpose um, for applying for this mass trails grant was to address this before we had catastrophic collapse and um, before it closed the um, greenway and or hurt somebody or multiple people. Um, we've already started work on it. However, um, the grant um, has to be utilized fully and the project completed by the end of the fiscal year. And um, it's, um, a more complicated project and more expensive project than we had um, initially understood it to be. So um, we're asking for $120,000, but now so that we can go ahead and go out to bid, the bids are already ready, the packets um, are ready to go. In fact, I think it was posted, but we can't of um, course, sign a contract until we have the funding in place. And it's important to go out to bid now, to, not only for the timing, um, but also to ensure that um, we get good pricing on the bids and that we get it in now before prices we assume will escalate through the winter and into the spring. And um, if we wait that long, not only will prices potentially go up, but also it shortens the timeline in which we can complete the project. Um, and then otherwise we'd have to return the funds to the state. So I'd be happy to answer any other questions or if people need more clarification about that. Thank you, Carolyn. Uh, questions for Carolyn? Uh, Martha? Yes, thanks. Hi, Carolyn. It's nice to see you. Hey, good to see you. Um, this is an interesting project, and it was fascinating reading the history about it in the inventory form. Um, I had a few questions about the, um, the drawings that were prepared for this. Um, and one, I guess you're saying that the, the bid packages are ready. Are the, the documents that are prepared for that more detailed than what we're seeing here? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, let me see. Um, I'm sorry. I was just um, um, trying to pull up the documents that were submitted. There were so many that went through, so I don't have them right in front of me. Um, okay. But did you have a specific question about the bid docs or the plans that you're looking at? Yeah, there are a few things I wondered about. It, um, it wasn't clear to me whether this wall was getting removed or not, or parts of it were getting removed, or yeah. is it just getting shored up by the gabions? Is that the plan to just leave it all in place? Yeah. Okay. Basically so that's the case because it was too, it was deemed to be the safest, mo the best way to do it is sort of put it on top of the existing wall or in front of. Okay. So does that mean um, included in the, you know, work is removing all that vegetation that's growing on it in front of it. Is that part of the work plan? And I guess what, what I'm getting at is I'm just wondering how the budget for this was calculated. Um, because it feels like 
the drawings that we have here, are, there's just a schematic um, elevation. And mm -hmm. this wall is pretty long, right? Um, yeah. So I, I guess um, I'm questioning, you know, if I were a contractor looking at this and I would look at this elevation, I would say, well, is the city expecting me to go out there and measure this all up and figure out how much <laughs> it is? Or is that information provided for them in the bid document? No, that's um, provided. So the um, I have um, I have the set um, that is um, just from last week. I can put it on the screen, but it is um, fairly um, detailed. Um, okay. And I don't know. It's a six page set. Um, and so probably, Sarah, can you confirm? You might not have had the most recent one. Um, yeah, I was just looking at that. Do you know? Date? What's the date on the, the most recent version? Oh, well, the one I'm looking at is September 21st. That's, that's what we have in our package. Yeah. OK. So um, I'm just questioning you know, the level of detail, because I think that that's where you can really get caught up um, when bedding is going on, if it's not really clear uh, to everyone involved okay. exactly what the dimensions are, you know, what the varying heights are, because um, it will really, the material will really vary and not everybody will be bidding on the same information. Do you know what I'm saying? So um, that might be something that you could get from the designers, um, the structural engineer that was involved in this um, prior to putting it out to bid. Are you so? Are you talking about the dimensions of the each um, section of Gabion? Yeah, I mean, the, again, the there is a sheet in there that shows the you know there's a five by three by three, a six by three by three. Um, right, but this is the what I'm seeing here is a schematic elevation, and it certainly isn't doesn't represent the entire length of the wall. Oh, okay, all right. So um, when, let yeah. me back it up against again a second. So when these um, the pricing or the estimating was being done for this to base your grant application originally to the state and then your request to us, uh -huh. um, how was that calculated? How was that? Um, so we we um, had the engineer so Berkshire Design mm -hmm. did all of the work to put together the bid package. Um, and they gave us an estimate and then they came back and refined, they've just refined it over the last few, um, actually this past week in preparation of sort of getting uh, a better understanding of what the construction quantities would be in those costs. Um, so I'm just, did you, also get the content of the bid like there's a 161 page bid doc did you guys i don't i'm guessing you might not have gotten that no, that, that wasn't included in the, the yeah application. So it was a pro was it a project manual yeah. the special specification yeah, yeah. And, yes yes so um that sh you know i think that in combination with the plan set is what will you know um um, provides those details. Okay. Um, yeah. And so there's, um, you know, a section for unit prices and, um, and, um, so that's the other piece is sort of, um, understanding all of the specifics within that, that are shown on the plan. Okay. So um, that said, um, are, how confident are the designers and the engineers that this budget is going to be sufficient? I guess that's my question. And you know, so I'm seeing, are we going to? Is there going to be enough money here? Are we going to see another application to finish it at some point? Well, <clears throat> I think that's a valid question because I, from the information we have everything seems to be up in the air and in terms of um, pricing. So it's their best estimate based on the project, but with 
all um, caveats that we don't typically hear. <laughs> um, it's just been that way for the, when you probably know it as well, that in the last couple of years, there have been some real surprises. Um, mm -hmm. So they have told us um, to, that they can only go to this level, that, that there's things just sort of out of um, understanding in terms of what those costs will be. And so I can't say that we're not going to come back. And I think that was sort of um, in the application as well to say, you know, um, we hope this is going to cover it. Um, and but one of the things that we want to do to control costs is to get it out on the streets sooner mm -hmm. than later. Um, because we're very worried that um, the price will continue to rise. Mm -hmm. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That answers my questions. Thank you, Martha, for all of those um, technical questions. It's really helpful. Other folks with questions for Carolyn? Um, forgive my ignorance, but what does Gabian mean? What What is that? Um, don't that, that's fine yeah it's um um it's really sort of a, a cage of rocks <laughs> so there's a sort of rectangular baskets that are filled with um stone and they're easier they're well they're used in certain situations in multiple applications i guess for um allowing some flex and movement so it's not one solid piece but it's also easier to lift and put into place because of the wire basket. So you can get equipment to pick it up and put it exactly where you need it, but it allows um, water to flow through as well. Um, so it, it sort of breathes in that sense um, more so than um, a solid wall. And, and I didn't quite understand your answer to Martha's question. Will the old rocks be part part of that all of those everything's going to stay in yeah so we're not they're not pulling the wall off they're leaving everything in place and then just sort of shoring this up with this new structure that will be um a stabilizing element basically and and help keep the wall and the hill behind it all intact thank you other questions for carolyn If not, are we ready to vote on this, seems like? Okay, can someone make a motion, please? Move to fully fund it at $120,000. Thank you, Julia, second? I'll second. Thank you, Jen. Uh, so the motion on the table is to fully fund the Canal Greenway retaining wall brought to us by the Office of Planning and Sustainability, the first of many that Carolyn will be bringing to us uh, for $120,000. Uh, is there any further discussion on this? Martha? Uh, I think in the future, it would be helpful to have a budget breakdown on um, just to take a look at what's included in this. So we're not just looking at a lump sum um, Okay. And the other thing, Carol, I forgot to ask before, I hope it's not too late. Um, I know there was some concern in your narrative about the structural integrity of the existing wall, obviously, because it's you know losing stones and um, concrete has been put in there and it's failed. And um, is there any concern on the part of the engineer that um, the hydrostatic pressure, which is pushing this wall, that's you know, basically soil that gets water and it freezes and it pushes, um, is this Gabion wall going to stabilize that without, you know, um, putting any lightweight backfill material behind it or anything like that? I mean, I'm assuming that they're confident that will happen, that will stabilize yeah. it, otherwise they wouldn't be recommending it, but. Yeah, I mean, that's why they took this path is like the, yeah. the, the way to address that very issue. And that was a big concern um, yeah. of, dealing with all of you know, with those that pressure um you know and the constant sort of water 
flow there. So that's why they chose this solution um, over anything else. Um, and yeah, we're relying on the their stamp <laughs> um, that this is um, the way to address this. Um, and, you know, and, and of course, we want to do it now before it really does, it just, um, you know, it completely fails. And then we're, that would be a much more complicated and, um, of course, expensive uh, project to try to clean up and restore. Thank you. Is this the only stone wall on the uh, rail trail? Um, in this section, I'm trying to think of, there may be smaller ones elsewhere, but there aren't a lot of, um, there's not a lot of grade change um, like this. I think is the most significant grade change um, between the the old rail um, and you know the upper the upper elevations. I don't I don't think we have anything else um, like that with such a significant drop. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions for Carolyn or? Any further discussion on this proposal? Okay, it's been moved and seconded to appropriate full funding uh, for the Canal Greenway retaining wall of $120,000. Uh, unless there is further discussion, Sarah will take us through a roll call vote. Sarah? Jeff? Yes. Jen? Yes. Chris? Yes. Jana? Yes. Martha? Yes. Julia? Yes. And Brian? Yes. Unanimous. Thank you so much. Really what appreciate it. What a nice way, Carolyn, to inaugurate your tenure <laughs> with, with the committee. It would have been a drag <laughs> if we had voted unanimously not to fund this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I would have still so, been back though for more. <laughs> uh, you would have. And we will see you, I think, is at the next meeting, I believe, uh, where we will be asking you to comment on a number of the other projects that you have brought forward. So thank you for your work Great. and we look forward to seeing you again. Great. Thanks so much. Take care. Okay. Uh, so we have now down to 12 proposals, I believe it is. We're moving on to the next agenda item, which is the funding round schedule. And are there specific places in any of these? Uh, not not all of them do not lend themselves to um, to site visits, such as the conservation fund and the uh, housing fund and uh, those those issues. But uh, should we ask Sarah to schedule us in terms of? any of the other places, uh, such as the Community Music Center or Smith's Charities or the DAR House, uh, or even I suppose looking at the property for the downtown housing site or the Leeds housing site or the um, uh, affordable housing, Habitat for Humanity sites. Uh, is there interest in Sarah in Sarah doing that, going to taking us to any of those places? I mean, those some of those sites we could visit ourselves, the sites of prospective affordable housing. But I think with the Music Center, Smith Charities, uh, DAR, trying to think if there's another one. Well, the other would be the uh, some of the the um, Sawmill Hills uh, land to perhaps hike on that as well. So what do folks think about that? Um, Brian, I'll just comment on the Music Center. Um, I believe from their presentation to the Historical Commission Monday night, um, that project is the window replacement. So, and window and door replacement. So it's all exterior is what I'm saying. So um, we could 
go on our own and look at the back outside of the building. Okay. Um, so that would be the, Chris? All right, I was going to say, uh, I, I don't know if we need to set up a for, thing on the level of interest, um, setting up a formal appointment, but I'd like to see if we can arrange access. I'd like to get access to the DAR. I think a lot, a lot, I don't know if any of us have ever been in there other than perhaps Martha. And Martha's I've not, not been either. in it. No, and they didn't present uh, to the commission, so I'm curious to see, you know, what, yeah. what it's like. It's a very important yeah. structure. And one thing that um, Sarah and I were talking about earlier today is if you looked at the building inspector report, there's a huge amount of work that, that uh, seems to be necessary. And they have only come to us with one small portion of that, which is the electrical upgrades to meet code. So um, one would think that we would perhaps be asked again. Uh, so does that is that some, something folks might be interested in is going to the DAR house? I'm seeing some yeses on that. Okay. Um, what about, so the, the community music center, uh, is the exterior windows and doors. And we could perhaps just look at that ourselves. And, and then we will have the, the folks from the music center helping us with questions when they make their presentations. Uh, Smith Charities, do we, is that, I can't remember the proposal now, is that all exterior work as well or is that interior? Martha's saying yes to all exterior. Yeah, it's um, continuation of the masonry repairs and chimney. So it's exterior, unless we want to get okay. up on a, you know, a lift. <laughs> um, or Don't we a... still have the drone, yeah. the drone video of that somewhere? Uh, yeah, probably. We do. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty cool. That was cool. Yeah. Sarah, you should get your own drone. <laughs> That'd be, so... be very useful. Uh, so do we need the, uh, the uh, Smith Charities or, or could we revisit that drone? Sarah, you could be send us that. And take a look at that. Um, so I'm going down the list here. I mean, it seems like the 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 potential sites in Leeds, um, the uh, the downtown affordable housing, uh, and the Habitat for Humanity. There, there's that's just land issues that we could do a drive by and take a look. Uh, is that correct? Uh, so how about the Sawmill Hills open space acquisition project? Uh, would folks want to take a look at uh, look at that? Sarah, you've arranged hikes in the past. Would that be of interest to people? How about a nod if you would be interested? Happy so Martha, yes. Jeff, was that a yes, Jeff? Uh, Jana is a non-committal, or is that a no? Um, that's so, I'm not sure. That's well. Then perhaps Sarah, you could try to arrange a visit for that as well. Sure. Okay. Um, and uh, let's see. So we have two two places so far, right? Dar and the and Sawmill Hills. Uh, the Rocky Hill Greenway multi-use trail. How about that? That would be another one to for folks to walk to, right, Sarah? Yeah, and that's um, you know, if you're comfortable with the survey and the plans, it's pretty easy to figure out where it goes. But it, it's not laid out on the ground. Um, it's publicly accessible property. But if people are interested in a more formal tour, that's certainly something we could arrange. Would folks be interested in a more formal tour for that? at the Rocky Hill Greenway? Yes? It's nod your head if folks might be interested in that. I'm getting no nod, no nodding yeah. on that. So it looks like we have we have two places, the DAR and the Sawmill Hills. Uh, okay. So Sarah, can you do a poll, a poll that's at some point, should we do that now? Yeah, generally, what what days and times are better for people, just so I can give 
see or a few options. I don't know what level of accessibility that building has at all. I've never been in it either. Yeah, I will probably take I'm myself out of it. To see it. Yeah. Uh, do you want to do this now or do you want to send a little poll out? Uh, just give me a, a, if people could just give me a, a few like, you know, mornings are better or, you know, weekends are out or those types of things just to, to get me started. I prefer mornings. This one, I will make myself available if no, if that's not what works. Yeah, I I'm prefer uh, any time after 10 in the morning. And probably not weekends, that's possible. So we're looking at 10 to noon on mornings. Anybody else want to weigh in on that? Would that work for the the DAR in a in a greenway? Or I mean sorry, Sawmill Hills uh, hike. My schedule is crazy enough that I'm just going to have to go if I'm able to. Um, I don't think it's possible to. There's no pattern, unfortunately. So Julia. for this one, I'll let, I'll take photos um, and share them with anyone who's not able to attend. Yes, yeah, so I was going to ask if someone who goes in could do some video or photo because I have the same issue. My schedule is so variable day to day that one day 10 might work and then for five days it won't. Yeah. I'm the same way. You know, my schedule's all over the place. Uh, Jana? Uh, for me, either first thing in the workday or end of the workday are best or weekends, um, but I will attempt to make it um, when it happens if I can. I don't know if that's helpful at all, but that's, <laughs> that's the way my schedule works. No, that's helpful. Thank you. So, Sarah, you can you can lead the hike in the Sawmill Hills uh, place. Sure. And you would have to get one of the DAR folks to open up the house for the for DAR, correct? Sure. Um, correct. And I'll um, you know, for anyone who might want to visit the property but can't make the time work, I'll send some instruction instructions to on how to access the um, the Pomeroy property. Um, you know, if anyone knows where the, the winery is on Sylvester Road, it, the entrance to this is basically right across the street and it's just been recently oh, yeah. logged. Um, so you can walk right in. Okay. But it's there's more reason. interesting things to see than the logging room. So we can, um, I'm happy to uh, arrange a tour. Uh, any other comments on the uh, site visits? Good to go on that. Great. You'll notice in the uh, schedule of meetings, Sarah had, I don't have it in front of me, but uh, um, if needed, we're going to have another meeting. and We will need that because we will have two separate meetings. We cannot get through all 12 of these proposals in one or hear from all 12 in one meeting without going in a little bit um, exhausted on that. So I think six in one or six in the other, however you want to do it, Sarah to hear would be would be great. Uh, any other business not foreseen when the agenda was published? I have one item I want to throw out, and I think we'll be doing this next. Uh, our, our next meeting is uh, we will be voting on a chair, and we'll be voting on a co-chair. Uh, Linda was our co-chair, so at this point, while I remain the chair, we have no co-chair. So one one of us, uh, one of the six of you will have to step up, uh, hopefully to be the co-chair. And, uh, and then if folks um, uh, would like to be the chair, I'm certainly open and, and, and happy to relinquish that to another interested person if someone someone is interested in doing that. I'm happy to, at the will of the committee to stay on as well. So we will be dealing with that with next week. But if folks could think about whether or not you would like to nominate yourself, uh, which I don't think is uh, is obnoxious. I mean, it's, um, that, that, would, that would be great. The responsibilities of the co-chair are limited and that is to, to, to be the chair uh, if the chair is unable to, to and facilitate meetings if the chair doesn't show up. I think that's about it for the responsibilities, right, Sarah? It's uh, 
Um, so it's it's uh, it's not a huge responsibility. The main responsibility is being, as we all know, is being a committee member. So think about that, and we'll deal with that next time. My understanding is that we are still into this uh, this sort of emergency accommodations act, and are able to continue meeting on Zoom. Uh, is that the case, Sarah? And do we want to continue to do this, or do we go back to City Council Chambers at some point? How do we? So it's do? been extended, I believe, and through the end, the end of 2023, um, so that the committee could continue to meet remotely for the foreseeable future, if that's what you prefer. Um, if people want to go back to in person, you know, I I don't have a preference. It's whatever works best for everyone. Uh, do we want to think about that and then put that on the agenda for next week? I mean, next meeting, or do we want to discuss that now? Is that something people have particular feelings about? No, no thoughts. Is Zoom working for people? Yes? Yeah. I'm seeing heads are shaking. What I'm do doing both. Is? I'm doing both, Brian, in my line of work. Um, and it's just kind of normal and, it, and I don't see Zoom going away anytime soon. So okay. I'm comfortable either way. Or the folks want to stay on Zoom at least through the end of the calendar year. I'm seeing yeses on that. Okay, let's yeah. do that and, we can, and revisit this in early 2023 and see what we want to do. Okay, great, good. Uh, I believe that any other business not foreseen when the agenda was published. Good to go. All right, we've got our work cut out for us with 12 other proposals coming up. And again, a reminder, the next week is city council meeting on Thursday, the 6th of October at seven o'clock for folks who wanna join um, either to speak or just to hear how the city council will deliberate on the St. John Canyon's church thing. Uh, otherwise, a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you, a second. Second. And we're all in favor, right? Sarah, you need to do this. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah, for your work.